Good day, greetings. My name is Kaden Mazzukere, and uh, I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. Welcome to lesson number 62 from the Grade 10 textbooks, The Distinction Bound Student. Well, in this lesson, I'm going to introduce the other uh, thing that is crucial to the formation of prices, which is supply. Okay, in the last two lessons, we were talking about demand, and uh, basically the last three lessons, I guess, yeah. Uh, so now we're introducing supply and what you're going to see is with supply, uh, the things we did in de uh, with demand are sort of repeated, but then uh, the curve is now upward sloping because the curve that we were talking about was downward sloping, the demand curve. You will see that the supply curve is upward sloping, but now the things that we were doing um, with demand are sort of repeated, but maybe in opposite, uh, if you know what I mean. Well, as usual, we start our lesson with homework from the previous lesson and uh, you were being required to draw a demand curve and uh, that demand curve was supposed to show that there's a research that proves that uh, an apple a day really keeps the doctor away. So if that is proven, uh, no one would want to go to a doctor in, in a way. People want to stay healthy. That's what the statement says. So if uh, it's proven that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, uh, what would happen? So uh, basically we'll start with a demand curve that is downward sloping. Um, so we then level it D, D. And so if the study proves that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, what would happen to demand for apples? Well, demand for apples would increase. So it won't show a, a movement along the demand curve because the statement here has nothing to do with uh, the price of apples. The price of apples stay constant, uh, but now quantity, de demand, quantity demanded at each uh, price level, you see, stays constant. Uh, I don't know if I say that I think okay, let's say apples are here five rand four three two going down like that So it would show something like this Okay at the same price of five rand Initially, let's say ten apples will be demanded, but now because of this research by this uh, surgeon general demand would increase from 10 even at the same price of five rand it would increase from 10 let's say to 20. so in a way app, the quantity demanded for apples would double if the research proves that demand increase so the demand curve that you draw is something that shifts to the right don't worry about the green lines that i'm drawing uh, all you need is the red red and then the shifting that's all okay so it would look like this and please take note that I made a mistake here. Uh, replace the S with the D because it's for demand curve, not supply curve. Okay, so we have the demand curve. So the D will be the original, then the D1 will be the new demand curve. So you get your marks for labeling this axis, the other axis, the new demand, the old demand, the curve itself, the curve itself the arrow that indicates the shift and the heading of the so all in all you get your eight marks so mark yourself that way if you have something missing then you might get seven out of eight if not six if not five if not four and so on so let's get into today's lesson like i said it's lesson number 62 supply so everything we saw with demand, we are now saying it in another way where we are going to see a different curve, which is a supply curve. All right, quantity supplied is the amount of goods or services producers are willing and able to sell, to, to sell, not sale, to sell, okay? This is sale, right? So I should say to sell, not to sale. Okay, this is wrong. Okay, to sell, at a given price over a given period of time. Some parts of the world are um, usually well suited to grow coffee beans, which is why, as the lyric of an old song puts it, there's an awful lot of coffee in Brazil. 
but even in brazil some land is better suited for coffee uh, for growing coffee than other land whether Bra brazilian farmers restrict their coffee growing to only uh, the most ideal locations or expand it to less suitable uh, land it depends on the price they expect to get from the coffee beans in other words what we're saying there is well let's say if the price of coffee beans was high even though there are areas that are not well suited for the growing of coffee uh you would find farmers growing coffee even though they may not make as much coffee as better land they'll still grow it because of the price because what they'll be able to grow to make more money with it i don't know if you get it but land could be used for other alternatives so if they see that the price of coffee will give them a good profit they would plant coffee in a lot of land even land that may not be best suited for the growing of coffee as long as it's going to grow and it's going to be harvested even if the yield is not as much Yes, they will still plant it because of the expected profits from the price that they see. They'll better use it for growing of coffee. So that may well mean that uh, supply of coffee may increase depending or decrease depending on what the price of coffee beans is in um, a given time. Okay, so moreover... There are many other areas in the world where coffee beans could be grown, such as Madagascar or Vietnam. Whether farmers they actually grow coffee depends again on the price. So just as the quantity of coffee beans that consumers want to buy depend on the price they have to pay, the quantity that producers are willing to produce and sell, the quantity supplied depends on the price of the coffee. Right, the table below shows how the quantity of coffee beans made available uh, varies with the price. So you're going to see a hypothetical supply curve, supply schedule, sorry, because without that schedule, then the supply curve cannot be drawn. So we are going to start with a hypothetical supply schedule. And uh, again, it's hypothetical because these numbers are made up. So a supply schedule works the same way as the demand schedule shown in the in lesson number 59. In this case, the, the table shows the quantity of coffee beans farmers are willing and also don't forget willingness here also means they are able to sell at different prices. At the price of five rand per kilogram, farmers are willing to sell only eight billions of coffee uh, beans per year. So what it means is at a low price of five rand, they, and they, they won't use, let's say all the land they have for the growing of coffee because the price there is low. So they would use the other land for growing other things because they, yeah, I think you get the point here. So them producing more coffee will be determined by the price of coffee. If it was more, then they would use more land for the growing of coffee. Come on, I, I hope you, you understand where I'm going with this. So we have um, a demand schedule, which looks exactly like the supply schedule. Uh, in, in terms of, look, we have the same prices ne? going down like this. Uh, for the demand schedule, the prices were also going down the same way. And it's the same prices that I was using for the demand schedule. All right, so but now the story being told here is now different. Uh, normally, when someone is selling something, they try to negotiate a higher price, and someone who's buying try to negotiate a lower price. So those who supply goods would want to sell more at a higher price and less at a lower price. But the 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 the, the statement is opposite with someone who wants to buy. If the price is high, they want to buy less. If the price is low, they want to buy more. You see? So that's why the demand curve is downward sloping and the supply curve is upward sloping. And again, it may present me with something that I remember that I did not talk about in the in the previous lessons, three of yeah, the previous three lessons when we were talking about demand, which is the relationship of demand and price. If you have noticed, you 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 see that when uh, price goes up, demand decreases. 
But look here, when price goes up, supply increases. So we can conclude and say the, the relationship between demand and price is, is inverse. Okay. And we can also say the relationship between supply and price is positive. Because here, when demand goes up, price uh, no 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 <laughs> let me write it the other way around i'll put the d and the s here i forget about this when price goes up demand goes down so the relationship here is inverse okay and here when price goes up supply goes up so the relationship here is positive Okay, take note of that. All right, let's look at this uh, supply schedule. So the supply schedule is just identical to the demand schedule, but the only difference comes here. Let's have a look. At 20 rand, which is this price here, how many co coffee beans are supplied? As you can see, according to what we have here, the answer is more. Okay, so that is 11. Okay, my line is not straight. I'll put it here. That will be 11. Sorry. Day. Yeah. And then at, um, if the price was five, how many coffee beans would be supplied? It's actually eight. Okay. Uh, this thing is not straight. I'm sorry for what you see here. I thought my lines were the ones that are not straight, but this definitely isn't straight because it's not because five rand goes with eight. If five rand goes with eight, then this should be the eight and not this. So this should be maybe 8.5 going up. Uh, I think you can correct that. Ne? And you can see because this goes with that. So it will be this dot here. So my eight should be here. Where is the pointer? My eight should be here, not where it is there. Okay. I'm going to make these corrections. So making these videos is helping me also to go and make corrections in my textbook where I notice that, oh, here things don't go together and so on and so on. Just like the, the answers I gave in that activity, the previous two lessons. Yes. I'm going to also make corrections on that. Right. Then, uh, so basically, yes, the demand schedule, you, we did the sub demand. So it's easy for you to, uh, understand the supply one. If you haven't watched the previous three lessons that I'm talking about from 51, 52, no, 59, 60 and 61, those three, they were introducing this whole thing. And so you need to watch them first before you watch this one. Okay. And, and if you watch all of them and then go eventually to the next yes you will never forget how prices are set okay uh i think you are ready to move on so at seven rand so here it's just explaining the things that we saw yes at seven rand fifty eight point five billion will be demanded like that the different things so you saw this in the graph let's not waste time so each point on the curve represents an entry from the table suppose that the price of coffee beans rises from 10 to 12 we can see that the quantity demanded will um, that farmers are willing and willingness meaning also they are able to sell rises from 9 billion to 9.5 billion yes like that like that like that so i hope you understand this is clear this is not rocket science so economists reflect refer to this relationship as the law of supply so generally the price and quantity supplied are positive or i can say the relationship this is what i was talking about just now so uh, and and it's the one that we said so the relationship also with demand with price and quantity demanded is inverse so just as demand curves normally slope downwards supply curves normally slope upwards and take note of the the phrase normally because just like demand yes we also have different um supply curves depending on a lot of factors ne? okay we have a, a situation which is here and a situation which is here which is these are the two extremes 
so supply curves can also look like this just like demand and the only difference will be the other one we put an s the other one we put a d and if you don't you can skip this part that i'm explaining right now you definitely can because this is not the part of the lesson then we go we have a situation like this then we have a situation like that okay so this will be perfectly uh, elastic this will be perfectly inelastic this will be relatively inelastic this will be relatively elastic and this will be unitary elastic Okay, I mentioned it in grade 11, even in grade 10, even though it might sort of confuse you, I, I know that it won't impact your grades in grade 11 because you won't, in grade 10, because you won't be uh, assessed on this. I mention it in passing, just so you know that uh, when I'm saying, uh, where is the, 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 the part? Yes, this part here that says, normally slope upwards it's not always the case because in some cases they may be vertical like here and in some cases they may be horizontal like this but they normally run in this form okay they are normally in between yes we have cases like uh cases like this yes we have cases like this but normally they are somewhere in between and this is the most common one this is the one that we normally draw when we draw a supply curve we don't normally draw a one that is relatively inelastic or one that is relatively elastic we normally draw something that is unitary elastic okay right uh compared to earlier trends coffee beans were unusually cheap in the early years of the 20 uh 20th Oh, the 21st century actually one reason was the emergence of new coffee beans uh, producing countries coffee bean producing countries which began competing with traditional sources like lat in latin america vietnam in particular emerged as a big new source of coffee beans and i'm sure it came because of the price as they saw that oh yes we could make a profit we could make money because look at the price of coffee look at the demand look at what's happening we might as well chip in and then they became a new source of coffee beans so the diagram below illustrates this event in terms of supply schedule and the supply curve for coffee beans do you notice that this is not the same as what we're discussing in the demand because with the demand it was basically because of uh many other factors like population growth and so on but here we are talking a different story uh which is a bit different so we are going to also show two supply schedules just like we did in with demand but with demand our story was there is an increase we had 2002 and 2006 and so the story was we had an increase in demand for coffee because of an increase in population and we also said we have a demand an increase in demand for coffee because of um the new trend of new beverages that have come like lattes and cappuccinos and espressos and so on okay and those other fancy ones the ones the americanos yes but in this case we are saying it you know slightly different so the schedule before new producers such as vietnam arrived on the scene is the same one as the as the above table the or or, or should i say as the table that i showed earlier okay the second schedule shows the supply of coffee beans after uh, entry into the market by new producers like vietnam so this is the first one the blue one it illustrates uh the supply of coffee initially um which is uh this one here okay so you can see here a 20 rand that goes along with 11 there okay this time around uh, it looks like things are square okay yes if i go down even though i may not be that straight so this 11 here goes along with this 20 here okay but the same 20 goes along with a 12 yes so this 12 here is this one here and this 11 is this one here and this 20 is the same 20 okay 
then what if we go to another extreme which is a low price so with a low price less will be supplied which is 8 billion in this case but with the same low price um, 9 will be demanded as you can see so this goes with that and like that okay um, so we see what a shift of the supply curve to the right which is an increase in supply okay so just as the change in demand schedule leads to a shift of the demand curve a change in the supply schedule also leads to a shift of the supply curve a change in supply as i've already mentioned this is shown in the diagram that we i just showed you by the shift of the supply curve uh, before the entry of the new producers s uh, to its new position after the new entry which is s1 notice that s1 lies uh, to the right of s a reflection of the fact that the quantity supplied increased at any given price as in the analysis of demand it's crucial to draw a distinction between such changes in supply and movements along the supply curve uh, changes in the quantity supplied that result from a change in price so we can see this difference in the diagram below Okay, here, just like we saw there, uh, A would be uh, giving us these numbers here. Obviously, they are coming from a demand schedule. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that at the price of 12 rand 50, 8 billion kgs of coffee beans will be supplied. However, if the price of coffee beans would rise from 12 rand 50 to 20 rands, all other things constant then there's going to be a shift of the sub no not a shift sorry a movement along the supply curve from a to b which is 9 billion kgs of uh, coffee beans would actually be supplied the next one uh, so this is here a movement along the supply curve the next one which is all other factors now not constant as things like oh new firms entering a market like uh, the the Vietnam coming in also to supply coffee, uh, that then can show that at the same price of twelve, uh, quantity supplied will increase from A to C, which is quantity supplied would increase from eight billion to ten billion. Okay. So the other, the extra, the, the extra 2 billion that is being produced here is being produced because of new firms that have, or new market, new suppliers, let me put it that way, yes, new suppliers of coffee that have come into the market of coffee beans, okay? So basically, we have the same type of thing, which is movement along the supply curve is not the same of shifting of the supply curve. Because movement along the supply curve is a reason of an increase or a decrease in demand. So we could have a situation where also supply can shift to point D. If I create point D, okay, which is here and some figure there. So it would simply mean if the if the price of coffee would drop from 12 Rand 50 to 7 Rand 50, uh, quantity supplied would drop from 8 to maybe 6 billion. Okay. Okay. Then the same could also happen. What if the price would go up from 20 to 30? The same would happen here. We'll have point uh, D E, point E, which will be somewhere up there. You see, maybe 10.5 billion. Okay. If you, uh, I, I, I guess you understand. But if you don't, that's why we have the comment section below. All right. So this whole thing is being explained here the movement from point a to point b is the movement along the supply curve the quantity supplied rise along s due to a rise in price here a rise in price like that like that like that yes this is repetition i've explained it so this is shown by a rightward shift yes 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 we know this one so the diagram below there's a new diagram now uh, we are doing everything in one lesson because it's easy for you to understand now 
now that you have the background knowledge from demand we might as well have the supply thing all in one lesson because it's not a new concept at all it's just a change of a curve which is now upward sloping but the same things that we we're talking about in demand apply also in supply so the diagram below illustrates the two basic ways in which supply curves can shift uh, when economists talk about an increase in supply they mean a rightward shift of the supply curve at any given price producers supply a large quantity of the good than before this is shown in the graph below by a rightward shift of the original supply curve s to s1 and when economists talk about a decrease in supply they mean a leftward shift just like we saw with demand a leftward shift of the supply curve at any given price producers supply a similar quantity of goods than before so this is represented by the leftward shift of the supply curve from s to s2 economists believe that shifts of the supply curve for a good or service are mainly the result of five factors but you are going to notice that the five factors we're talking about here are 100 percent different from the factors that influence the shifting of the demand curve okay the first one will be the change in input prices input prices will be the price of raw materials let's say uh, there are so many things or so many factors or so many uh, inputs that are put in the production of goods and services one of them could be rent one of them could be uh, oil prices like petrol and so on and so on one could be the raw materials that are used in the production of such goods so the change in input prices the change in the price of related goods or services the change in technology the change in consumer expectations and the changes in the number of producers of that particular good right then uh, just like we saw with the demand curve this here illustrates an increase in supply and this is a decrease in supply so supply can shift either to the right and to the left and as usual we end our lesson with homework so go through these questions and i'll see you in the next lesson god bless